st astonishment. Orlocks knock in the dusk. A rowboat rises and settles, searches and slides. Under a great eucalyptus, a boy and girl feel around with their feet for those small, flattish stones so perfect for scudding across the water. A dog barks from deep in the silence. A woodpecker double-knocking keeps time. I have slept in so many arms. Consolation? Probably. But too much consolation can leave one inconsolable. <laughs> the water before us has hardly moved except in the shallowest breathing, breathing places. For us back then, to live seemed almost to die. One day a darkness fell between her and me. When we woke, a hawthorn sprig stood in the water glass at our bedside. There is a silence in the beginning the life within us grows quiet. There is little fear. No matter how all this comes out, from now on it cannot not exist ever again. We liked talking our nights away in words close to the natural language which most other animals can still speak. The present pushes back the life of regret. It draws forward the life of desire. Soon memory will have started sticking itself all over us. We were fashioned from clay in a hurry. Poor throwing may mean it didn't matter to the makers if their pots cracked. On the mountainside tonight, the, the full moon faces the full sun. Now could be the moment when either we fall apart or we become whole. Our time seems to be up. I think I even hear it stopping. Then why have we kept up the singing for so long? Because that's the sort of determined creatures we are. Before us, our first task is to astonish. And then, Harder by four, harder by far, and more secret to be astonished.